Hi guys, Saloni this side and welcome back to our channel Codera. So guys, in today's video, I am going to share an interview experience of a candidate who applied in the Capgemini. And in this video, I will also share some preparation tips. So watch the video till the end. So his first question was, give a brief introduction about yourself. So I have already discussed this question in the previous video. But if you didn't watch that video, so here again, I will tell you how to answer this question. So first thing is never memorize the answer. As this question is asked by the interviewer because he wanted to know about you, who you are and what knowledge you have. So this should be like a conversation. So please don't memorize your introduction. So your answer should be in a proper sequence. You can give your answer in form of timeline. So you can start from your personal introduction, like from where you are and you can also tell him about your family and then tell him about your education. After that, tell him about your projects that you have done in your graduation and then the technical knowledge you have. And in last, you can share your achievements and your other interest. And please remember one thing, always tell the truth in your introduction. So that if the interviewer asks you something from your introduction part, then you, can, you will be able to answer those questions. And one more important thing is, don't give a very long answer for this question. So your answer should be brief and properly communicated. After this, his next question was, did you took any coaching for JEE and where? So its answer is completely dependent on you. If you took the coaching, then you can say yes or you can say no. And then the interviewer asked him, tell me something about your family. So you can tell him the name and the profession of your father, mother and the siblings. And if is there any other special thing about your family, so you can also mention it. For example, Someone in your family do some social work. So mention this thing. It will create a positive impact on an interviewer. So after this, the next question interviewer asked him was, tell me about any one of your projects. So to encounter this question, first you tell him what was your project and explain its complete working. And if it was a group project, then also tell him about your group members. And also tell him from where do you get the idea to create that project if your project is based on some real life problem. And then mention which technology you use to build that project and why. And explain him how your project is beneficial to solve the real world problems. So in this way you can beautifully answer this question. So after this question, the interviewer asked him some technical question. So the question was, what is this keyword in Java? So to answer this question, you can say, this is a reference variable that refers to the current object. And the most common use of this keyword is to eliminate the confusion between class attributes and the parameters with the same name. And this keyword can also be used to invoke current class constructor or method or it can return the current class object and we can also use this to pass an argument in the constructor or the method call. So in this way you can answer this question. So guys here candidate mentioned about the object oriented programming in his resume. So the next question interviewer asked him was what are the classes and objects. So in answer of this question you can say class is a user defined data type which defines blueprint or prototype from which objects are created and it is a logical entity and it cannot be physical and class represents the set of properties or methods that are common to all objects of one type and in case of object you can say object is a basic unit of object oriented programming which represent the real life entities for example chair bike pen and so on and a Java object is a member of Java class which has some identity, state and behavior. And it can be physical or logical. And in Java, an object is created using the keyword new. So in this way, you can answer this question. So after his answer, the next question interviewer asked him was, can we create multiple objects of a same class? So its answer is yes, you can definitely create the multiple object of a same class. So this is how you can create the multiple objects. So here Audi, BMW, Ford, all these are the object of class car. So after this, his next question was explain the concept of inheritance with a real life example. 
So in answer of this question you can say inheritance is a mechanism in which one object acquires all the properties and behaviors of a parent object and we can also add new properties and behavior in the child class and inheritance represents the is a relationship which is also known as parent child relationship and it provides code reusability and it also used for method overriding and in java we use extends keyword to perform inheritance So for example we usually see that a child acquires the property of his or her parents so the current generation inherits the previous generation as few of their properties matches with each other like eyes nose height and etc so this is called the inheritance in real life so after the inheritance his next question was what is dynamic binding and how does it differ from the static binding So guys in dynamic binding compiler doesn't decide the method to be called for example in overriding where both parent and child class have the same method while the binding which can be resolved at the compile time by the compiler is known as static or early binding so the binding of all the static private and final methods is done at compile time so the static binding uses type information for binding while dynamic binding uses objects to resolve to bind so you can use these points to answer this question so after this his next question was what is linked list so to answer this question you can say a linked list is a linear data structure that includes a series of connected nodes that are randomly stored in a memory here each node stores the data and the address of the next node and the last node of the list contains pointer to the null So this is the brief definition of the linked list. So after his answer the next question was how many types of linked list and what is the advantage of each of them. So basically there are four types of linked list. So the first is singly linked list, doubly linked list, circular linked list, circular doubly linked list. After that you can mention some advantage of each of them. So after this his next question was distinguish between stack and array. So here are some differences between stack and array. So you can point out some differences in your interview. So you can pause the screen to note down the differences. So guys, now you can notice that interviewer asked him some question related to the data structure because he mentioned about the data structure in his resume. So always remember whatever you will mention in your resume, you will going to face those topics in your interview. So be careful. So after this his next question was explain me the algorithm of odd even program So in answer of this question the candidate explained him the algorithm of modulus operator So after his answer the interviewer asked him without using modulus operator how will you do it So guys here is one more solution that you can use in place of modulus operator So after that the interviewer gave him a series to find out the value of x So you can see the solution of that series on the screen. So in that way our answer will be 20. So now let's see our next question. So the next question was a train moving with a uniform velocity of 90 km per hour and passes a pole in 20 second. So what is the length of the train? So this question is very easy that you can solve using the formula of speed time and distance. So guys here is the solution. And if you want so you can pause the screen to note down the solution and after this his next question was given two vessels a which has 5 liter capacity filled with h2o and b which has 3 liter capacity filled with h2o and both of these vessels do not contain any measurement mark on their body how can you recover 4 liter from these two vessels so guys this is the solution of this question which you can easily understand Now let's see our next question which was his last technical question so the question was any questions for us so guys don't miss this opportunity because most of the candidates say no i don't have any question but you should ask question because it shows that you cares about the organization so you can ask one or two question that are focused on the organization so you can ask like what are the goal the company has for the next year So it shows that you are planning to work for a long time with the firm. Or you can ask the question related to your job role. So you can ask if I selected for the role then what could I do in this role to help you achieve your vision. 
it shows that you are really interested in joining the company so this is how you can answer this question so now let's see what was the question hr asked him so his first question was tell me something about yourself so we have already discussed this question so his next question was tell me any situation in your life where you have given your full efficiency on your projects but your faculties were not convinced and didn't give you positive feedback so how did you tackle this situation and his next hr question was is your all aggregate from 10th till now are above 60% so here the hr wants to confirm that you fulfill the eligibility criteria or not and after that hr asked him do you have any education gap so you can answer accordingly and then his next question was are you willing to relocate so its answer is completely depends on you its answer may be yes or no but here i would suggest you to say yes because every company wants a employee who is flexible and who can relocate according to the company's requirement So if your answer is yes then you can say like yes i am very excited about this opportunity to use my skills and i also love to visit different cities and to meet new people so i am definitely open to relocate and suppose if you will say no in answer of this question then the interviewer may think that you are very particular about the job location so in case of this situation instead of directly saying no you should say like sir i would love living in indore and would prefer to stay here however for the right opportunity i would be willing to consider relocating if necessary so this is how you can answer this question so after that hr asked him are you comfortable with any shifts so in answer of this question you can say yes because every company wants a employee who is flexible and work according to their requirement so after this hr asked him are you comfortable to learn any new technology which is out of your comfort zone So in answer of this question you should say yes because in this era of technology you should always be ready to learn new technologies and then hr asked him are you aware about the 2 year service agreement so if you are aware so you can say yes or else you can say no after that the hr will explain you about the service agreement and in the last hr asked him have you thought of going for higher studies so if your answer is no then you can say Sir I have no plans for further studies because I want to gain work experience and want to apply my learning and skills. And suppose if your answer is yes then directly saying yes you can say sir currently I have no plans for higher studies but after some years of my career growth I may go for further studies. So this is how you can handle this question. So guys that's all about today's video I hope you will like this video and don't forget to subscribe our channel thank you so much for watching